Hi everyone, I'm Heine from Artster and today you're gonna see how Artster works and in case you're the first time joining this session, Artster is an LCA tool that's designed for you to be able to do LCAs at scale amongst others. So the whole design, everything revolves around you as a user so that you would enjoy the most out of doing LCA work and figuring out the environmental impact of your products. And um, I will be demoing to you and at the same time training you how to use Artster. In addition, I'm going to show you many new features that I think you're going to like. And as usual, I ask you to ask questions. Please share them in the, in the live events chat section. I answer if I'm able to. And in case I wouldn't be able to, you'll get the answer later on through LinkedIn, or you can contact us always via email. For example, if you need to contact me personally, you can contact me at heine at urgster.org, or you can also go to our website and find some more details about Urgster there. Let me show you how Urgster works. Here, what you can see, I'm sharing my screen with quite a high zoom, just to make sure that you're seeing it. <laughs> you're seeing actually what I'm seeing in front of me. I have a big screen behind the laptop, so I see it easily, but you might not be able to. So as I mentioned, Artster is designed for you to enjoy doing LCAs. This is what you see in front of you. It's one of my organizations that I have access to. And one thing good to know that every organization has their own set of members and their own subscription. And this is a workspace. A workspace is a collaboration place where you store all your LCA data and you can divide it based on however you feel like, based on your teams, product lines, based on, for example, that are you sharing some data with your customers or not. It's up to you, it's fully flexible. So you can think them of as folders. But let me finally show you how does a cycle look in Artster. A cycle is an LCA model and it's just easier to say so, a cycle. And I'll show you why. Here is, for example, I'm gonna make a copy just in case not to mess up my original version. From here, I click the button duplicate, which will make automatically a new copy of that particular cycle that I had already. And when you enter a cycle, this is what you see in front of you. The big picture of the environmental impact of the model that you, you have modeled, or in this case, I have modeled. This is the LCA of uh, packed fruits, in particular made with parameters so that I can show you how they work. And uh, it's a sim super simple design that takes in count producing the fruits. Let me show you. So if I start clicking around, you can see that there's a fruit production itself and a packaging. And to make this whole um, cycle an actual full life cycle, I have taken in count that that fruit has been uh, transported from the producers or who is producing the fruits to the store and where I went and went then went ahead and bought it. And then eventually I actually used it, which means I ate the fruit. And as you can see, even eating the fruits have some environmental impact. And in case you're curious, it's coming from washing the fruits itself. And waste management is even though you're thinking that, okay, in this model, for example, I've been modeling an apricot. But there is a bit of seed that you need to get rid of in the end of the life of the product itself and the packaging. And that's where the environmental impact is coming from, at least in this model. So we, this is an overview how Artster works. And as you can see, it's really intuitive to click around and see the environmental impact. And let me reload to get rid of the centering. And uh, we, as you can see from this model, for example, with just one view, like if I reset the diagram, we go back here, 
with one look, you're able to see that where is the biggest environmental impact is coming from in your product or service. With Earthstore, you can model both. And uh, this is particularly powerful for when you need to communicate LC results to any of your stakeholders, whether it's your management board or clients, showing them this view already gives them an understanding that where is the impact coming from? And also it gives an easier understanding for your, for example, um, product developers to where to focus their efforts on. This is a model where the smallest impact is actually in the use phase of the product, but it's really, really typical when you do an LCA that you realize that the impact is coming from the use phase itself. So when you're improving on your product, you should be focusing lowering the environmental impact of the use case instead of production, or ideally, of course, both, but you might get more effort out of it, focusing improving the use phase instead of the production itself. Now, what I wanted to show you today, there's many things. So basics, this is the basics. When you click on any of the stages, or any of the circles, the size of the circle means the size of the impact in a selected impact category. Let's go back here. This is where you see which impact category I'm viewing now in. Earthstore by default comes with five impact categories and the five of them are these. So now if I click, for example, on water use, the impact value updates to show me the impact related to water use. And uh, if we change to, for example, damage to resource availability, as you can see, the value updates and shows me now in US dollars, the, dam the damage. And the main five impact categories that are by default in Earthstore is uh, coming from recipe 2016. But if you have a full equipment license, you have access to many other impact methods and categories. And when you have access, you click here on other. You can see the whole list, what we have already inside Earthster. We have environmental product footprint uh, 3.1. So if you need to do PEF modeling, we have it already. IPCC 2021 all the recipe end and midpoints and tracing. So what you would do is um, choose one, you click here, and then you choose the category itself, which one you want to see. For example, let's say I want to see land use. You click view impact. This will recalculate the results. And even I was about to say that this is a bit slower, but even that I didn't have the time to even mention before it opened. So now what you're seeing is in view mode, your own cycle in land use impact category for or the one that I have selected. And the same way as a moment ago, I can click around and see where is the impact really coming from. And for example, in this case, now what you can see that this is where my own model ends. And if I click the explore button, what I can see is where is the environmental impact coming from in that particular process that I have added into my cycle. So I'm already digging into Ecoinvent in this case. So with Earthster, you're able to explore the data sets that you're using in your models or even considering using in your models. And that helps you choose better, better processes to represent your own production processes or your own LCA model. Yes, let's go back to the normal view where I can edit. And the one thing that I wanted to mention, so when you click on any of the circles, the system centers it. And when you click on a next time or another time, so you need to click on twice, it opens what we call the drawer. The drawer is the place where you actually edit your model. You add in their inputs. That's where you model everything. And therefore, it's in a list view. Now, let's see. I have in this model two bundles. Bundles are like groups or folders for your inputs. Let's see what's inside fruit production. 
I have three different inputs. And this is a bit tricky that why would I have these three inputs? The reason for this, because I'm using parameters. So I have set up my parameters to have three different fruit options. As you can see, I have apricots, mandarins, or peaches. And this, this moment, what you're seeing here in front of you, is calculating based on the mandarin version being active. So therefore, it has a value and the other ones don't. And I have done that. When you have parameters, you can create easy formulas. That is actually really easy to use. You just save your formula and that's it. And everything is calculated. And you have a model that you're able to check different scenarios super easily. Let me show you how. So first I show you the parameters we have here. Actually, yes, an important thing to remember especially if you haven't used Erster yet. So this is the drawer where you add all your inputs and you are adding different information related to the inputs of your cycle. On the left side, in front of the name of the cycle, there is this menu icon. And when you click there, you see all the options that you're able to do with your whole cycle. So these actions relate to your whole cycle. For example, if you click into notes, you see any notes that you have taken for the cycle. And unfortunately, this model doesn't have, I'll show you a moment, another one that has really cool cy cycle notes. In the settings, you're able to rename it, you're able to export your cycle. And one of the new features that I demoed last time is that you're able to replicate in bulk. That's something that I can show later if, if you're interested. I wasn't planning on demoing it this time, but of course I will show if someone wants to see it because I demoed it in, in the last session. The only part that I want to tell about replicating in bulk is what it does is you take this particular cycle and create copies based on a CSV file that you have created. So you make the model once and you can create thousands of versions in just one upload, which takes less than a minute to create all those cycles. Then different sections, the parameters that I've been telling about, you find them here. The parameters feature is still in beta. So in case you're interested, send us a message I have a form that you can fill out to get early access. So there's tiny little things that we still need to fix, but as you can see, I'm able to use it already. And, and that's, but that's the reason that it's still in beta stage to make sure that we get rid of all potential issues. And related to this, I have awesome news for you. We have a new, new UX designer and she would like to meet you. So if you're up for a customer interview, please comment in the section that uh, you would like to have a meeting with us and I can set up a meeting with you or she can set a meeting with you herself. Because everything we do in Erdster, we want to make sure that you get the most out of it doing your LCAs and everything feels natural and intuitive. So therefore, come and have a meeting with us. Back to the parameters. So one of the cool new things that you can do now is you can reorder them. You can just grab, drag and drop and reorder them. And one thing that I already saw that's coming up is you will be able to add different sections. So you can reorder your parameters list when, let's say, when you have uh, hundreds of different parameters because your model is much more complex than this, than this little demo. And that will help you organize your data. Now, you can see that I have these variables. So parameter from an LCS perspective is different variables in your cycle that might change based on different situations. I have set these up and the next step would be doing, and the reason why you do parameters for your cycle is to play with different scenarios. And you do that by clicking here, the button, scenarios. Look, I click here. It opens a new view 
So now I'm no longer in edit mode of my cycle. I entered the scenario mode where you can see instantly all the changes that when I'm moving around the different parameter little uh, buttons here, you'll see the results straight away. So let's see what happens, for example, that instead of the mandarin production, we are, our fruit is going to be apricots. I change that. And as you can see, the environmental impact already updated. It's almost double, which is surprising because I would say mandarins, apricots, really similar, but uh, clearly there's a difference in how to make them, like the, the environmental impact of producing those fruits. Same thing if you select peaches, the environmental is updated. Let's imagine uh, our fruit package is much bigger than 250 grams. Let's say this amount, 350 grams. Everything updates straight away. And when you have created a model that you're like, okay, now, for example, this is what I'm selling to my customers. And if, if I would be, let's imagine that this is my model, I'm selling these fruits and uh, one of the customers, they wanted a bigger packaging of peaches. And I make the model and I can say, save it as a cycle. Look, I click here, I can rename it. And I'm gonna say this, that this is not a copy anymore. This is a scenario with, uh, was it peaches? And then you save it. And the system asks you, where do you want to save it? We're going to save it in the same workspace, so keep it there. You click Save as a Cycle. And now what it opened for me is that particular cycle I saved with that particular scenario that I have set up. Look. So this is the environmental impact we had. We have in the fruit production. We have the peach production active. But I'm not sure if you noticed here, there's no longer calculations. So if we go into parameters, there's no longer available parameters. So what happens is that when you take a cycle that has parameters, you save a scenario, it saves that particular thing. So it's kind of like saying that, okay, this is done. This is how it is. Now I can share it with my customer, for example. So that's why it no longer has the parameters. That's an, this is one of the, the newest, uh, newest features that we have just came out of the oven this week. Let me see. Meanwhile, I go back to the one that we were playing around with. This one, our copy, the original copy that we were playing with. And I, I just showed you how to play with scenarios. If the cycle has, um, parameters. Another thing that I would like to show you is because now what you see is, of course, this is a ready made model. What if you want to model your own version? What do you do? You can create a cycle, a new cycle from scratch. So if we create here, I say I'm going to call this demo. Let's say we choose the whole life cycle life cycle of it. We are not going to start it from a template. Ursa has many different types of templates and they are coming from the USEIO database. Based on that, we've added a use stage information from us. For example, let me show you if I would be saying a car. You have here some options. If you click on it, it shows you already how the model would look like. Even here you can click around and you could start a new model based on these templates. But we are not going to do that. We're just going to say that off. We're going to click next. We are going to say, because this is test, we're going to keep it as one unit. As you can see, Erdster is really flexible. You can rename any of your, what we call production unit and functional units. This is something unique compared to other LCA tools. In Erdster, you're able to add both and many at the same time. So I could say one unit, I say 10 uses, let's take out the example, and then I can add others. Um, 10 uses means um, 25 
kilowatt hours. And when you're setting up your cycle, before, of course, creating any cycles, you have to think that what is your scope of your LCA? What, why are you doing it? And based on that, you will set up the right production and functional units. And what makes it easy with Urchster is that all the only thing to start a new cycle, you need to say, what are you measuring? The production unit. So for example, if I would be wanting to model this phone, I would say one phone, and then I would say rather three years of use. Years of use, let's do it like that. And we put 500 charge cycles. And it's not mandatory to put functional units in the beginning, but I've been imagining modeling a phone for a while, so I know these typical ways of measuring the output of a phone. Like, what do you get out of it? You could also add all sorts of uh, amount of phone calls, text messages, anything like that. And the idea between these two is to help you model better. And when you have additional functional units, you're able to compare your product or your own models with either models from other users or your own models better because two like a cheap phone and an expensive phone is going to have a totally different environmental impact but when you're comparing the environmental impact like the how many times you're able to charge the phone you're going to get a different perspective what is really happening behind but let's create this so create a new cycle you start empty there is nothing you click on production, you click again to open the drawer, and here is where you start adding inputs to your cycle. You click add new. What it opens is, this is where you search the whole database. Currently, we have Echo Inman 3.10, the latest version available, and USEIO. And uh, the magic with Urchster is our search, how the search works. As you can see, it keeps in memory the last thing I searched last time, and you can always delete it. You can search with multiple keywords, and it always gives you suggestions based on your keywords. So for example, you can see I was particularly looking for this process, but let's see what happens if I would just say plastic. I'm going to say plastic. It gives me some suggestions. And if I don't find any better ones, the next step would be either adding several keywords, which I recommend doing, and or both at the same time, filtering your result. Look, if I want to add something plastic related, that means that this is a material product. And we have these tags to help you choose better. So what we do is you mark this that show only material products. You click here. As you can see, there is now a filter applied. The amount of suggestions got lower. Then you're able to say that show me instead of Spanish uh, resources, I need to see Europe like this. You say Europe and then it reorders everything based on the priority. Then I would be able to say that, uh, don't show me equipment. I'm not interested in equipment data. I want to see what else there is in the database. And you, you could mark it. And look, for example, there is a straight away from USEIO, a plastics input, a process. You're able to view the information, what the database provider has provided you from, about this process. You can see here that, for example, to the USEIO database, I have full access, all the information they have added, different available scales, so the production unit of the process itself, and the top processes. Of course, if this is not enough information, what you should do is you click here, view as a cycle, opens a new tab, and look, now I get to click around and see the process itself. It's super cool. You can dig into the database and see that what the LCA researchers were thinking, it's relevant for that database or the data set. Like, look, look. And you can just click explore. 
and see everything further and further away. And this helps you choosing better inputs for your models. Let me see exactly. Let's go back. I can see that we have a comment. Yes, we do. So Bogdan is asking, do you provide scoring which would include all topics at once? Interesting question. I think you are referring to the impact category. And uh, please correct me if I, if that's not the case, what you're asking. Look, what I would do, so let's add, for example, this process now, so that we have something in our model. Here. And if you are looking for a scoring way of doing, for example, the PEF methodology has one. So you go to other, you go to PEF, and from there, you choose the one called EF single score. You click here, you view the impact, it opens to you in a new tab. And as you can see this time, it takes a bit longer to calculate and you will be able to see the impact in that single score. To my understanding, none of the other impact categories have a scoring model. So if you need any other type of scoring models, either you can dig up from um, documentation from, uh, from the internet, any other uh, models, scoring models, but Erdster doesn't have its own scoring model, not yet. We, uh, we do have a project going on funded by Business Finland that the idea would be to guide the user to be able to do better environmental decisions, for example, from an eco-design perspective. And there the goal is to create a sort of scoring model that guides you how complete your model is, for example. And if this model would be scored, this would get a super low score because, yeah, I have one input in, in something that probably should have much, much more. And I'm missing distribution, missing electricity usage and all those things. But that's coming up and uh, not, not in a while. But I recommend using the PEF single score. That's basically what you what I think you're looking for. And it's designed for that purposes. So there, at least behind the single score, kind of like you delegate on the LCA researchers who created the method to choose for you what impact category are the most important ones. Let me show you, for example, let's go back here and create a comparison. We're gonna go here this one and i i from the comparison you will see a bit better what it means to compare different products what i just did i went to the model that i was showing i clicked compare it automatically adds this cycle into a comparison and then i can add other references to compare you can also create a similar comparisons from different scenarios so you go to the cycle and you start adding different scenarios and it creates for you a comparison. But what I wanted to show from here, that's the new one. We are going to go exactly here. This one, it's already showing it. We add this cycle to compare. And as you can see, now we are comparing two different ones. My normal demo cycle and the scenario created with peaches. Now, the interesting thing is why we do not have our own scoring model in general. And why I personally don't recommend it is this view. When you dig into the individual impact categories, you can decide for yourself that for your situation, your context, which impact category is the most important for you. Many companies at the moment are talking about CO2 equivalent. Carbon footprint is now the trending topic. But a good example is water use. Extremely important in some countries. At the moment, I'm in Spain and uh, we are already hearing all sorts of limitations for water use because there hasn't been raining enough. 
And now if you're thinking about that, you are thinking of improving your product, you have to make the decision that, okay, am I focusing on reducing my carbon impact or my water footprint? A single score will hide this. You don't know. And you'll just get the score saying five. But when you dig into the different impact categories, you can make your own decision that for my company, water use is super important because it's a scarce resource in this country. And in another country, Finland, oh, Finland is not going to run out of water for a long time. They can probably can start selling it to other countries. There's a lot of lakes at awesome places. Okay. I'm not sure if I answered your question and we sidetracked, but this is a training. That's the whole idea about. So please ask more questions and let's see. Let's see where this takes us. But yeah, what you see here is now a comparison. You can compare scenarios, different cycles. You're able to add any of the database processes and compare them with each other. To, for, for you to draw better conclusions. And you can dig deeper into it, seeing where is the different impacts coming from and if they are the same or not. And you just click around and manage to do this. Okay, now let's go back. Oh, one tip, if you click on the logo on the middle, it takes you back to the dashboard or the workspace view. I really love using that feature. I hope you cannot hear that in my neighbors there is construction work going on. I really hope. Then let's get into, yeah, I already saw how to add inputs, how to search for data. One thing I didn't show yet is, uh, so what we added now was an input to your model. If you want to add waste management related processes, you click here, add new, you say waste management, let's see, just waste. We take out material product, we take out eco invent, and you can start, as you can see, we have a tag for it. You click here, and I'm just gonna choose randomly any so that I can demo it to you. I choose this process and look, now, when this data set is added, this one is considered as an output. So from a calculation perspective, that's an output from your cycle, and that's how it's calculated. And if you would be, for example, modeling um, credits that you avoided using a particular product, you would also add it as an output. So for example, you avoided using plastics instead of input, you're saying that, okay, this is an output. So the environmental impact is negative, which means positive for the environment. <laughs> this is a bit brain twisting for me at least. And that's how you model credits. And look, in the model, it shows up as a see-through see -through circle. This is one way of uh, modeling exactly. So credits or related things when something is an output, for example. Also, if you need to model allocations, you're able to use those. So from the big button, add new, you add all sorts of inputs from databases, from other user created cycles, your own cycles, anything that you have access to based on your subscription. If you click here on the tiny arrow drop down menu, you have the option to create a custom process and a bundle, which helps you visualize better your model. And let me show you one that has both of those a lot. And it's also a hot topic, at least in Europe. So many of our clients are asking how to do EPDs with Erdster. And here is an example. So this is a template and a template based on a PCR for aluminum cap. And build with the idea of that anyone could be using this model. Now, let me show you a bit. And uh, this is how it looks. So just like the PCR is saying, you need to report 
your raw material supply, A1 category, A3, A2, and all these, the way they are added in the model is with bundles. Simple. That means that Earthster gives you full flexibility on reporting on based on any standard you choose. All you need to do is create the base structure in the bundles, and then you're able to download your results as a CSV report, for example, or a PDF. And that's it. Create your own reports according to the standard that you want to create. I'll show you later a greenhouse gas uh, protocol version. And uh, inside the bundles, of course, you can have many more inputs. This is a simple one. Let me show you if we go to the use stage. This model is, for example, done by our team. I haven't done, done it myself. And this is uh, inside here is a custom process that has one bundle, end of life, and use life cycles. So here, the idea is that based on the PCR, it assumes it calculates how many times that particular product is used. And based on that, scales up the environmental results. So look, if this product now, for example, would be used um, 15 times, it recalculates straight away. You see the impact instantly. And you can dig into it. So this is how you would be modeling. And since this is a template, you can see here, for example, empty processes. So there is a placeholder for a process that in case another version has that input. And this is, for example, all the different transportation. Inside here, there is, for example, cargo ship, trains, truck, and you fill out based on your own situation. And you use it as a template. So you, you do the hard work once for creating your a model to rule them all. And then you take that, take a copy, and create versions and versions and versions. Kind of similar like what you can do with parameters. And if you combine the two mindsets, it gives you endless opportunities and a way to scale your LCAs instantly with, with really little work compared to doing all those one by one. Now, let me see. Exactly. So this is what I wanted to show you. It's a really much more complex model than my silly fruit packaging. And one of the features we have for these kind of situations, especially when you are collaborating within your team. So since Earthster is browser based, as you can see, everything happens, happens on the browser. That means that you can collaborate real time with your team members as long as they have access to your workspace and the organ or the workspace in that organization. And everything auto saves. So no matter what I do, it saves it. And what did I want to tell you? Yes, exactly. Reviewing a process. So reviewing a cycle. That's something that you might need it when your EPD is ready and you want a third party to review everything you have done. If you've done your model correctly, it will have all sorts of additional information, all the documentation that you have, like all your assumptions you documented really well inside the processes, inside the stages, like for example, this one, you are able to share this with your consultant who can use Earthster, see all this straight away and um, they might be able to pinpoint straight away or even you yourself you can see that oh look this is um this process is rest of the world region and this one is europe hmm is there something wrong with it is that is that on purpose and then you can just click on it you see where it is if you have documented properly it would say here the reason why you have selected rest of world and as you can see here, it's not documented. So now I am like, hmm, I wonder why the person who did this model added this instead of that one. Really useful for collaborating together, finding what you need in your model, especially when it's a big one like this, and because you can na navigate anywhere. So you need to, let's say, 
you need to update the information related to your liquid nitrogen. You click here and you update the model, change the number, and that's it. It's saved. And you can also download this particular view separately to be able to check it easier. So this is the review panel. This is not no, relatively new, but it's not part of the feature updates. I just like showing it. Then let me check my notes about feature updates. Yes. Meanwhile, I'm about to show you the new feature. Is there any questions, any comments or anything you would like me to show? Just please add it in the comments. And let's see. One of the newest features we have is the ability to search for cycles available for you in Earthster. So before what you have to do is have already an existing cycle, add a process, and then you could see what, what there is available. Now what you do is go to any of your workspaces, click on the drop down menu here and look, now we have something called search all Earthster cycles. You click here. This looks just like the search before. And uh, as you can see, you can search the same way. Let me see which one to wish you. Let's take any, for example, the waste management ones. You can first check the information about the cycle that what you're looking for. I always recommend doing this. Whenever you're building your model, read what the data is about. It gives you insights. And especially with EcoInvent, it's really important to check this one. What, what they call the product. Sometimes the EcoInvent process names, the titles do not match with what is the output of the process itself. So check it always. In the bottom, you find their own classifications, which gives you a good way of searching for data. So you can use, for example, you add this and you'll find everything in that particular materials recovery related processes. But what I wanted to show you, so not only that you can view them. So let's go back here. You say view cycle. It opens it now in view mode. You can click around and see everything. As long as you have access to, you have full access to Ecoinman, you can see this, what I'm seeing now. So I have a full license and, and I can see everything. If you don't, you're able to see it in limited mode or you can explore other cycles. Let me show you, for example, if we go back, uh, let's search our cycles and we are going to clear our, all our filters and I'm going to show you what the University of Twente has been doing. They've been modeling bridges as their student assignments, and I really love their products. And as you can see, so I'm able to look into their models because they're publicly available. With an educational license, all your models are publicly available. And I can see that, OK, Someone has created a concrete bridge. Let's see what they say about it. They haven't added any details about it. The only thing I know that the scale is a bridge and years of crossing the bridge. But we can view it the same way as a moment ago and we see what's happening there. And uh, wait, <laughs> something. Yep, this looks interesting. They have a really big. My, my guess is that this is not done well, this model, looking at the impacts, but that's not the important part here. The important part is that when you find a cycle that you're interested in and you're saying, wow, this would be an awesome uh, starting point for my model. Now you can do that. Look, you're in view mode. You go to the settings, navigation, so the cycle navigation. And now you have the option, save a cycle. I click here, I rename it. Let's see, copy from Twente. I choose the workspace where I want to save it. I click save as a cycle. And look, now this is my cycle and I can update and change everything 
what they have done. Really useful when there is models that are either shared with you by your suppliers, for example, because you have access to those models, at least if they have given you full access, you're able to modify anything. You, so you, you take it as a starting point. And related to this, instead of the 20 cycle, let me show you one that I think you will love. The one that I mentioned related to greenhouse gas protocol. Instead of reach, we write GHG because that keyword already finds the cycle that I'm looking for. Look, there is three cycles done by Earthster that are available for you. So I have many more versions, but these are publicly available. The first one, if you view it, it looks empty, but it's not. It's full of information and it gives you the structure what the greenhouse gas protocol is asking for you to fill. Look, inside, for example, category one, you can see the information, there is links, there's guidance, how to model based on the greenhouse gas protocol. And let's say you want to use this as your starting point. You click here, save as a cycle, and you don't even have to rename it if you don't want to. You click save as a cycle, and now this is your own version. You can start adding here processes. Let's see, add, let's add something. Purchase goods and services. Mm, let's add legal. Legal services. Look, legal services. That's a good one. We add a process. And let's say in a year, we are paying $2,000. And let's make sure I select the buyer. So I'm the one who is paying for the legal services and I have no idea about their margins. And this is now in my model. And that's it. You can start with someone else's model as your starting point. And this one is a really good one. I have put a lot of effort into making it and guidance how to do it. The other one that I was showing you, if we go back, wait, not here. We go back to the dashboard view. The other one is still, wait, not this link, this one. So we go back to again to the greenhouse gas. This one, the one that says work in progress, it's still truly work in progress, but I have shared it already. We view it. Now, the difference here is that there is already some example data, some example processes, for example, here you can see the legal services, software, employment. And my goal is to grow this into a model that it works for many people as a starting point too get easy, easier started with the greenhouse gas protocol. But this is my personal thingy. I like doing it. I want to help our users. So if you are interested, please give me ideas what to add in here and I can update the model for everyone for it to be available. So any help is appreciated. Let me see. I have a question. Bogdan is asking, could you share experience engaging internal and external stakeholders? Some tips. Could you explain how it works together having own data from stakeholders versus integrated data? Integrated databases, which are part of Earthster. Oh, yes, I can explain some of that and I can even show you. Look, in Earthster, the way we structure data is every single cycle that a user creates or a database model, a process, a flow, flow, flow process is, has the same structure. There, therefore, they're always compatible with each other. It's kind of like Lego blocks. You take this one, you take this one, and you just start build a house the way you want it. Now, in my demo, in this one, yes, the copy one, I have invited Erdster to be my supplier. So at the moment, I'm logged into my personal organization and I have invited, let me show you from here, I have requested an LCA pretending Erdster to be my supplier. So our other organization inside packaging, 
I have already connected here. This is the part where you, so when you're requesting LCA from outsiders, from your suppliers, what you do is first you have your model, you are already adding some reference point for their product. So in this case, this is the packaging film that I was using originally an Echo N1 process. I clicked request LCA from supplier, filled it out and uh, let me show you actually, let's do it live. So fruit production, let's imagine we know uh, Earthster is producing apricots. I click request LCA. Earthster is already saved in the system for me as a supplier. So I just start writing their name here. I click on it and uh, I say, I need this for my demos. Of course, here you would add your own personal information, what, why you're asking, why do you need that LCA, and uh, what this is what they get in an email that they're that you're asking them from apricot production. And you're representing them their model with this particular process. You just say, click send request. What Erster, the other organization, so the supplier is now they got a supplier request. And look here, from the original cycle, what I asked them to do is to improve this echo invent process. Look, I open this, use a cycle. I'm saying that this is what I'm using for representing their apricots. And what they get is this particular echo invent process to improve on it. If they would have their own model, they could say here, Take my existing one, it's better than this one. But if they don't have one, this is an amazing way of getting better environmental data than the average echo invent process. So you're giving them a way for doing an LCA with a style of paint, paint by numbers, which means that anytime they update any values here, issue a release, your cycle gets a notification that there is updates available. Let me show you where are those. Mm, let me go back here. Exactly to our actual model. Look, in data sources, you see all the different data sources that you have in your model. In here, I have nine processes from EcoInvent. And this is also something that's important to know. It says new version available. So when I have done this model, it was created before Echo in 3.10. So probably the previous version. And now it's telling me that I can update it or I should update it. And it depends on the situation, you actually might want to update it or not. And so that's the Echo Invent processes. And I have the one Erster already answered my supplier request. And it's saying that this is the cycle. That's how they have named it. It's up to date. I'm able to see where I'm using it in my process here. I'm able to view it. So it's, um, Erster has given my organization full access rights to see everything. But for example, Erster could have decided, so the supplier could have decided to share with me only the total impacts and I wouldn't be able to see more granular data. So that depends on your relationship level, trust level with your supplier that are they willing to share everything they have in their model or just total impacts. But already total impacts is better than anything. The only part that you have to make sure is when you're requesting an LC through Urchster is talk with them. You really have to send them an email, a Slack message, doesn't matter. The way you are communicating with your supplier, you need to follow up. Erster doesn't do that on behalf of you. When you request an LCA, they just get an email. If it ended up in their spam folder, they will not notice it. So remember to follow up, tell them, help them a bit that, oh, look, you just update this information, you issue a release and done. And everyone is happy. And look, let me show you. So for example, exactly, this is up to date. That's already updated. I have requested another data set. And uh, 
this one is unanswered. This is, for example, how it looks like that. Now, this is the one that we asked for or sorry, so the supplier to answer the apricot, and this is not answered yet. So I can view it, which what I asked for, or I can also delete and like, nah, forget it. I don't want it. I have a better supplier than you. <laughs> yes, you could do that. Of course, the whole idea of requesting LCS from your suppliers is that you kind of help them to do an LCA quickly instead of spending a lot of time on creating their own. And once they share the data with you, you're always able to add that particular cycle that they're sharing with you into any of your other models. So if it's a packaging product that you're using in many other different products, you're able to use that particular cycle from your What's that? Suppliers. Then, so this is kind of like the difference on integrated versus uh, external data. So in a way, it's everything is compatible. In the data sources, you need you see different sources. So EchoInvent is the database itself. Earthster is another user happens to be our other organization, but here you could have several different suppliers and this is where you see and keep everything up to date. Now, for example, if we want to update this whole uh, model, I would just click, click to update all because I want to have the latest data. Let's see, our value now is 59 grams. I'm curious, I click update all. At the moment you have to, I recommend to reload the page just in case. Now our environmental impact is 58. Depending on your model, it might be bigger, might be smaller. I've seen both directions. So the latest update might not go to one way. And if we go back to data sources, now you can see that all everything from EchoInvent is up to date. Everything from Earthster is up to date. So it's my model has the latest what it could have. And of course, this is the part that I mentioned that issuing a re release. All these updates are governed by what we call releases. So if you have a connected cycle, so this, for example, Earthster's cycle is a connected cycle. Here, there could be my own cycle. Let's add one so that you see. Here, for example, add new. This is also a new feature. You can look for only your own cycles that you have in your organization. Doesn't mean you personally integrated it. It means that inside your organization. Look, let's add, for example, this one. We add here. We say here is when you choose the functional unit, what is available in the existing cycle. And this is why it's cool that when you add additional ones. So originally this cycle was curated at one bottle, but you can add different uh, functional units because that particular cycle has it. And that's it. Look, now I have a, an input from my own organization. So you're able to build super complex models and make sure and have hundreds of versions and still keep, keep your data always up to date. So if you would be having wide models, you have only one cycle where you need to make sure that that's up to date. And then everywhere else, you kind of like, receive the updates. You're saying that, yes, update this or no, this I want to give as history data. We are not updating it. And that new data source shows up here. Look, that's my own organization that I'm de demoing from. And it's also up to date. We have one minute left. We had a, yes, a lot of some questions and uh, I think I see show you everything. I have showed how to save uh, a scenario as a cycle, how to select the scope in cycle search, which means that what you're really looking for. So instead of um, searching for everything, you're able to say, for example, background data, you see only the databases, cycle shared with me, anything that you're getting from suppliers and other people. And the last one, public cycles, is anything that's publicly available inside Earthster.
for example, that's how you see, start seeing, for example, the universe th created cycles. And what else? Yep, those were the main things. And yeah, remember that now you're able to search for cycles from workspaces and create your own copy from there. And that's it for today. We have spent our hour. The next session will be in about a month. I haven't um, scheduled it yet, but I will be doing it really soon. This recording will be available inside the event, what you're watching now. So LinkedIn keeps her copy always. And I will upload the same in YouTube. So you're able to watch the recording afterwards. So for example, in YouTube, you find all our old training sessions. And thank you for watching. Hope to see you next time. And if you have any questions, send us a message and see you next time.